Iranians have been plagued by poetry for many years and I've suffered a lot for it. As a nationalist, Ahmad Kasravi Yeah, I get that it sounds strange. But to understand his reasoning, you have to look into Iranian history. Hey, what's up? very original. First of all, it's important to remember that Iran as a country is not as homogenous as one may think. The rich cultural diversity of Iran includes the Azeris of the Northwest, the Gilanis of the central northern region where Iran meets the Caspian Sea, the Turkomans of the Northeast, the Baluchis of the Southeast, the Arabs of the Southwest, the Lures of the West and the Kurds of the West and Northwest. Most of these groups even have their own language and today many still speak their dialect alongside Farsi which is the national language. After World War I, unity between these groups was very weak, particularly as Iran was being exploited by both the Soviet Union and Britain. These regional movements began making demands for autonomy or increased participation within the Iranian structures. And many of these movements were also backed by foreign powers, for their own interests of course. This regionalism was laid to rest by Reza Shah, who put in place a unifying vision for Iran. While many may see this move of uniting a common Iran with a common language, Farsi, as somewhat dictatorial, Kasravi would later highlight how foreign intervention went hand in hand with the consequence of national disintegration. In 1942, Kasravi wrote, Our younger intellectuals cannot possibly understand and thus cannot possibly judge the reign of Raza Shah. They cannot because they were too young to remember the chaotic and desperate conditions out of which arose the autocrat named Reza Shah. It's also important to remember that Kasravi, unlike some of his other contemporaries such as Sadegh Hidayat, did not have a racist view of unity and felt that Iran could encompass a diverse range of peoples under one roof. Well, Kasravi was a fervent nationalist and so only had one aim in mind, the strengthening and unification of Iran as a nation. Whilst many other nationalists at the time, such as Muhammad Zia Gokalp in Turkey and Muhammad Iqbal in India, saw mystical schools within Islam as having great potential to drive towards unity, Kasravi saw mysticism as being the opposite, a weakener of the nation state. Exactly, you can see Kasravi's aversion to this kind of thinking, which is not at all surprising, considering how Kasravi was a positivist rationalist. Haha, <laughs> no. Positivism is the theory that truth can logically be deduced through science and reasoning. Kasravi's criticism of mysticism is important because it represents a new wave of Iranian modernists and their reaction to Iran's mystical heritage. 
following on from his rationalism, Kasravi thought that writing as a whole needed to be clear and concise, revealing truth rather than concealing it. He is quoted as having said that he would much rather prefer the truth written in a clunky manner to lies that have been penned with roses. Poets such as Hafiz, Saadi and Rumi, who were all such revered Iranian poets, were seen by Kasravi as bending the purity of Islamic logic and reason, while replacing it with charming prose that he claimed led the youth astray. This reflected in his nationalism, that for strength of the nation, all people needed to adhere to rationality, reason and logic that disrupting this logic paved the way for a weak nation which gave way to exploitation by foreign powers. He even pointed out how Western thinkers would utilize mystical thinking in Iran for their own purpose. Most Orientalists have been the political servants of European governments and they have continually made efforts to cause mischief among the Eastern peoples and to spread repugnant acts over the whole of the East. And therefore, they have always promoted those subjects, the result of which has been the spread of religious animation and the increase of disunity amongst Eastern people. We do not insist that all of these Orientalists have been the political servants of Europe, but we are sure that there has been no other purpose in following these subjects than ill will towards the Eastern peoples and in particular towards Muslims. well spotted. This resistance against westernization was continued in Iran after Kasravi's death. Unlike the figures you just mentioned though, Kasravi was far more controversial. You see, although he was a rationalist, he still rustled a lot of intellectual feathers with his insistence that it was wrong to move away from religion. Although he was very vocal against constitutional corruption, he made many enemies with the clerical class. And finally, although he was against superstition, he was disliked by many leftists who saw his nationalism as being reactionary. Kasravi didn't have any formal training. Most of the things he spoke about were a result of him being self-taught, which meant that he made many errors along the way particularly with regards to how he cited Sufi scholars. Despite all of this, Kasravi was one of the first intellectuals to concern himself with the detrimental effects that the West had on Iran, which further paved the way for many thinkers to engage with issues such as the nation-state, power, religion and linguistics. Hey guys, if you want content to do with the history of the Islamic world, make sure you subscribe to my channel Hikmah History, where I'll be uploading on a regular basis about the amazing history of the Islamic world. I hope to see you guys there.